Yes. Because some people say, yeah, nothing is happening. So we, we, we don't know what is happening. So I uh, said, so the government should, if the president is this thing, he should come in and at least give us some uh, relief. Because for almost a year, we have children going to school, pay school fees, blah, blah, blah. So they should do something. We have made a, a barrier so that people should not go to the beach. We have made red flags that is to swim in the sea right now. It's a danger. Yes, and uh, this is Good Afternoon Ghana. Uh, when we return from this break, we'll be joined by Superintendent Sheila Bachman for all these conversations. Stay with us. This is Good Afternoon Ghana with me, Francisca Kakrafos, and it's now time for us to have our conversation about the Easter celebration during COVID and uh, whether or not we've been adhering to the protocol and how the police have been trying to enforce the restrictions. But before that, there's a, a story that has been trending on social media and a, a very unfortunate story about a, a boy uh, who was killed by two teenagers in Kaswa. Um, We'll touch, we'll get a bit of update on that and then we'll get into the COVID and Easter conversation proper. But let me, let me introduce my guest again, Superintendent Sheila Abaye Bachman, Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service. A big woman, trust me. <laughs> Sheila, right, good sir. afternoon to you and you're Thank welcome. You. I've not seen you in this attire before. You're looking, you know, you're looking tough. I'm on operational duties. Nice one. <laughs> welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, so, Tell us how, just give us an overview of how the, the police, you know, announced this strategy um, to ensure COVID protocols are not breached during this Easter and how it's been going. Okay. So basically, um, the objective of the Inspector General of Police and the Police Administration has been to prevent crimes from happening. So that has been the prime objective. That's why you saw us stepping up on education prior to Easter festivity, so that everybody will be aware of what we'll be looking out for, and then they could partner us, because it's a partnership between the police service and the people we serve. And so far, I think the media, you have done fantastic. Um, you, you did educate the public about what we expected them to do. People have complied largely across the country, so we're not looking at Accra alone, across the length and breadth of Ghana. People have complied so far. Of course, we have had a few challenges with the night gathering at some places. Um, it's not over yet because today is Easter Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I have been patrolling. Uh, as I speak to you now, there is a Ghana Air Force helicopter that is also helping us with um, aerial patrol to see what is happening on the ground. So whoever sees the helicopter should be assured that it is for, for part, I mean, part of the security arrangement for their safety. So, so far, That's impressive. Uh, well so meaning Ghanaians have what, had their safety. What, what do they do if, for instance, the, the patrol up in the air sees something untoward happening? So com there is communication with the ground. So if they see something untoward happening and um, security officers need to go in quickly, it is communicated. And then some pictures or images are also taken for future purposes. Okay, so, so far, so good. Yes, I okay. would say so. I, I've got a, a, a tall list of questions just to get the <laughs> breakdown. But before we digest that, tell us, can you give us an update on this rather unfortunate and sad story about this boy who was killed in Kaswa by two teenagers? Okay, so we have two teenagers in our custody right now. I wouldn't want to put their names out, although they are 16 and 17 years, um, for allegedly murdering another boy, a young boy, 11 years old. Um, whose, I mean, the victim's name has been put out. 
I think that one you have already said, Ishmael Mensah. So these two teenagers, obviously... 16 and 17. 16 and 17, yes. And do you, do you have any idea what they've been telling the police or what the police have been able to glean from them? We, we will not put much out at this moment. I mean, I think all that we need to know right now is that um, these two young boys lured their younger colleague, who is an 11-year-old, into a place, and then they sort of struck him with <laughs> cement blocks and other objects and killed him and actually buried him. They dug the ground and placed him there. He and we understand this was um, allegedly for ritual purposes? That's what they are telling police. But um, when prosecution starts, I'm sure you'll get a lot more from the courts as we all put before courts. Given that they are under 18, how are they going to, how's prosecution going to go for them? So um, once they are more than 12 years, we cannot say they are not criminally liable. The law allows us to prosecute them. We will also take a lot of guidance from the Attorney General's um, office because we, we're dealing with murder here. So um, let's wait for how things will turn out. But right now, they have been placed in a cell that we refer to as a juvenile cell. So they are not placed together with adults. OK, so, so if, um, if I understand you right, will, they will be charged with murder? That is what we are investigating. Okay. And like I said, let's wait a bit more because um, from all intents and purposes, what we have gathered is about murder. But let's wait a bit more to get to court and then. Yes. We'll and and uh, so just a quick one. Um, in, in your experience as a police officer, it's not new that children will commit such crimes, but it's rare. Yes. And what does it tell you about the, the, the crime landscape of Ghana? Two young boys, supposedly with the intention of money, perpetrated this heinous act. I would like to go to the education direction because some of the questions I'm asking um, myself, uh, so this 11-year-old boy, because um, according to our information, this incident happened within their neighborhood. These two young teenagers are known by their mother of the 11-year-old boy. So what, what ha have they been exposed to? Who was the ritualist they were going to send the boy to? This, this tells us that we have a lot more work to do, not only as a police service, but as a nation, and as all institutions that must come on board to, to make people aware of the danger, dangers in society and what we must do to avoid these. Does the police have any leads on this said ritualist. And like I said, um, <laughs> at this point, I won't put a lot of information. That, that's it for me. I rest my case. And, and by the way, she's, she's, a fa she's a fantastic lawyer. And I heard you were uh, the best journalist at Ghana Institute of, the, the best journalism student at the Ghana Institute of uh, Journalism, Sheila. That was a long time ago. Thumbs up to you. <laughs> But then let, let's continue the conversation on, on the COVID protocols and adherence. Okay. So you said that compliance largely has gone well. Well, with um, a lot of the issues, uh, particularly with the beach gathering in the five regions we are looking at where you have the shore, particularly with um, gathering, communal gatherings on parks okay. and um, um, jamborees and street dances and carnivals. But we have also have a few incidents where open air pubs, which are allowed to operate, open air drinking spots are allowed to mm -hmm. operate, have sort of turned their places into crowds in the night, which is also dangerous for the reason why gatherings have been restricted. So let me just interrupt briefly. What the police did was to categorize um, the, the, the places. or So you have religious and social activities where mm -hmm. in some cases there's a ban, there's an outward ban. Yeah. But what you talk about, the open air drinking spots, et cetera, um, th there's some, some allowance that is given. Yeah, um, according to the law, open air drinking spots where COVID-19 protocols will be observed are supposed to operate. And so when we go around, what we do look out for is whether this place is an open air drinking spot and whether 
people are seated a meter apart, whether there is a hand washing basin and all those things, okay. and whether people are wearing their mask if they are not eating. So these are the places where people have taken advantage of, and in the nights, in the wee hours of the morning, they turn them into... Ordinarily, this should not be, I mean, it wouldn't have been a police matter for us to be checking pubs unless we are looking at crimes and drug use. Mm -hmm. But COVID is such that it is giving all of us the, the responsibility of ensuring that people do not gather so as to stop the spread. So if you are an operator of an open air drinking spot and you are allowed by law to operate, and you allow people to come so close together such that they endanger themselves. What you're doing is endangering society. We have had the cause to warn a few people who may even be taken to court, but today is the last Easter day. And beyond today, COVID will still be with us. So yeah. until the rules allow such engagement, let me take advantage of this opportunity to one particularly operators. And I wonder why people also patronize. <laughs> yes, because you would think that people will be, will, will care about themselves and their families to want to stay away from exposing themselves to um, contracting COVID. But we have seen them happening. So let's take advantage of this opportunity. But thank you, Metro TV, because your cameras have been out there. Yes. As we appeal to you, naming and shaming. If you see yourself on TV, dancing <laughs> in a crowd without a mask, you ask yourself whether you want to do it again. That's Metro TV, naming and shaming. Exactly. <laughs> so Sheila, tell us, um, so for these operators, when, when, you, when you send the police out there, and they meet people who have gathered without nose mask, as you saw in some of yes. the videos that we showed. Um, who, who are you holding accountable? The people who are breaching the, 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 the nose mask wearing um, or the, the owners of these pubs? And the, the law allows us to arrest the patrons as well as the operators. But when you look at the numbers and you look at the risk you're also posing to your police officers, you decide on what to, to do. So, so far over the weekend, what we have done is to disperse most of the time. No arrests. But then the operators are still there that we can charge. Oh, okay. So, yes, we may leave the patrons. But there have been a few cases where patrons have also been arrested. So, please, tonight and this afternoon, we, we expect that nobody will go to such places because we may be tempted to arrest all the patrons as well as the operators. And, and just a bit of education for, the, for these two groups, the patrons and the owners, what are you, once arrested, what are you charging them with? There is a law. So right now, the executive instrument number, I think 395 is still in force and it comes under the Act 10. So there is a law. Let me just quickly look for it and give you the, the the quotation of the law. So definitely with that law, okay. we, we, we can charge people. And we have been charging people. The last time I gave you statistics of how many people have been convicted. So this is conviction by court. About 200 people that have been convicted by court under the Imposition of Restrictions Act. Within this Easter period, how many arrests? Do you have a number? Uh, it would be interesting to know how many arrests and how many have been charged. While you're trying to get those uh, numbers, um, we're joined by Shadrach Ejari. He's uh, been out and about observing how people are uh, celebrating the, the, the Easter and trying to also adhere to COVID pro protocols. Shadrach, um, what can you report? Hello, Shadrach. Shadrach, try and unmute uh, your, press Hello, the Pastor, unmute can button. You yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I so can. tell us what you can report. Where have you been and what have you observed? Uh, Shadrach, can you adjust your microphone? Unmute it. Well, Shadrach will try and unmute Hello? his microphone. Hello. I'll come back to the studio with Sheila. So Sheila, so 
I was trying to find out um, so far within this Easter period if there have been how many arrests really have okay, been made. So um, because the period has not ended, although I have some figures, I will not be able to put them out. Okay. Let's wait till we have taken all the reports from across the country because we are taking a, um, a national outlook. So we've taken all the records from the country, put them together and then we can make those figures available. How many officers were deployed across the country? Every Just police officer who is not on um, excuse duty or is not on leave is performing this duty, including those who work in the offices. You know, it's a, it's a holiday period. Yeah. And because we are not having an encounter with the public from the offices as in administrative staff, the orderly rooms, and there are a few offices where we have officers who who, who see to our correspondence with um, agencies. Okay. All those officers were deployed to be part of um, police officers on the ground. So first of all, we wanted to show visibility in uniform. And then we also had plain clothes officers helping. Um, and you know, we work with security agencies. So um, if I, I'm sure your cameras will tell you. There have been, and I told you about the Air Force helicopter for yes. instance helping. So Operation Calm Life is also there, which is a, a, a joint effort by the police and the Ghana Armed Forces. So we have had massive cooperation from our officers, from immigration, even from fire service, and um, the Bureau of the National Intelligence Bureau. Okay. So, so will, we, will we see this, a similar recurrence for the next holidays that are yet to happen? This forcefulness from the police? We do it all the time. Perhaps what has changed is about the media giving us more visibility. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it all the time. Even especially because of COVID. That's why I put it in that way. Yes, especially because of COVID. Because now we had to restrict people from gathering as well to stop the spread. Yes, and because during um, the holidays, I don't know when is the next of, holiday, when, that's when people congregate. Often when holidays are approaching, um, the police administration put a hold on leave and um, excuses that will take people away from work so that we can be there in our numbers to monitor and to enforce whatever the laws are. Because um, let's not forget that our objective was not only about restricting the, uh, uh, about enforcing the restrictions, mm -hmm. but also to prevent general crime from happening. And we also spoke about accidents, motor accidents, yeah. and how the numbers had been rising earlier in the year. Yes. And so we needed people to comply so that we do not record any more incidents. So these are the three areas we have been looking at. And um, going forward, although on normal days you may not see um, as many police officers as you probably saw during this holiday, when hol um, holidays are approaching, you may see us in those numbers. You, you mentioned uh, road safety, and so I would, I, that's the next thing I would want us to talk about. Um, okay. In the clip that we, we played, we had the MTTD talk about an increase, which you also mentioned, mm -hmm. an increase in the road accidents. It mm -hmm. says between January and February, about 7% increase. Yes. So during, during this Easter celebration, there was a lot of traffic um, on Friday, on Saturday. How did the police go about managing the traffic situation this one i should be asking you because you are reporting <laughs> <laughs> you are reporting from the grounds so, so what you showed the public would, would 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 speak for itself that we were on the ground trying to manage the the situation on friday it looks as though many people were moving from one point to the other yeah. and so within from 4 p.m to about 10 p.m in accra you had that congestion and we were at every point trying to ensure that there will be that flow. So that was managed. And since then, movement has not been that much, but wherever, I'm sure your cameras will capture them. Yeah. But the MTTU officers have also not rested. How about um, accidents during this, this brief period? Like I said, I cannot put out any figures, but it's been um, better. It's been better. Yes, because we think that the education went down with the people. And we hope that we will continue to ensure that safety. Um, so we were checking speed. We were checking 
drunk driving mm -hmm. or we are still checking i should say yes because she said it's not over exactly uh, there are aggravated overloading situations. exactly okay if, if you're unlicensed you cannot just prove that you are you are qualified to drive so all those things are things we are checking okay and we're hoping that people will carry on with these good things so that we don't record okay i'll things. try and reconnect with uh, shadrach ejari who who is supposed to be out and about but i understand that he's gone off and so um, we'll leave it there. Um, Sheila, let's talk about burials. It was part of um, the categorization the police made. Um, yeah. So the plan was to allow only private burials and put a limitation as, as regarding the number. Okay, so um, because it's a long holiday period and because um, unfortunately people have passed, we knew that people would want to take advantage of the period to bury their loved ones who have passed. All we did was to remind them that according to the law, you could have private burials. You couldn't hold funerals. And for private burials, the maximum is 25 people. And so far, um, according to reports and from across the country. And should it be inside a facility, a church, or it's, it has to be outside? It depends on where you want to hold it. But wherever you're holding it, we, es we expect that the COVID protocols are observed. So seating, you space it according to one meter, and that there are hand washing machines or hand wash stations. Everybody is adorning their mask nicely as we are doing <laughs> on TV. I had so, to change mine. I was in a blue, and and uh, my sound man told me I have to I have to combine with what oh, I'm wearing. Okay. So he made me change. So you see, <laughs> now we are adorning it beautifully. Yes. So, <laughs> so that's it about. Um, Funerals and burials. Which, which, uh, so does it cover, so religious and social activities, burials, road safety, you talked about general crime, I'd like us to get into it, but not now. Okay. Does it cover everything then? Um, we spoke about cinemas and movie houses as well. Yes. Thankfully, they have closed them for us because there is no exemption. Nightclubs, we believe that they have closed them. There were a few nightclubs whose names we had, and so we went patrolling, and we we're hoping that they would continue to keep them closed until... There are no restrictions to enforce. Large religious gatherings, thanks, um, thumbs up to the religious bodies and to the churches especially, because okay. Easter crusades on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Unfortunately, this year we had to be crippled, but it went well. Uh, passengers and people who go out generally. In Accra, when you gauge compliance level, you see that people do wear the mask. Not everybody, though. We are trying, and we keep encouraging people to remind their neighbors to wear the mask when they set out. There are elsewhere in the country where wearing the mask seems to be problematic for them, but we're still trying to engage them. Engaging with community leaders and opinion leaders have been very helpful, and so we will continue to do that to ensure that we are all safe. Would you agree that for it's, it's in managing the social activities that has been that you have found compliance to be a challenge as yes. compared to maybe religious and exactly. other activities? And you, you, you mentioned that it's during the night. So what's, what's the strategy then to, to address that or to deal with that? Well, that's why we are also out there in the night. And like I said, you wonder why people would be, Sometimes you want to use the word irresponsible, but you wonder why people would put themselves at such a risk of contracting COVID or spreading COVID. And so we need everybody on board. We need the media to continue to drum home the fact that the fight um, is not over until COVID is gone totally. We do not want to get into a situation of a total lockdown, which we are seeing in some parts of Europe now. So if we can prevent it from happening now, why won't we try to do that? So in the night, yes, we go on patrol, and we also put plain clothes officers out there to sort of um, behave as though they are patrons so that we know who and who are operating. Because people and would then behave properly when they when see they law see enforcement. When they see uniformed officers, which is also what we want. But then we also have to put people in plain clothes there particularly when we have engaged the operators over a period of time and they're still refusing to comply. You need some kind of covert action to be able to 
arrest them to answer to the law. So in such a situation, they'll be arrested? Yes. Okay, okay. It will not be um, the other situation where you said to just to uh, alert them or ask them to wear the nose mask before? Now we have, we have given enough education. And that's why the warning was that we have, we have told you what we're going to do. If you fail to do it, you leave us no um, option than to arrest. Let, give us an idea or give us um, a, an understanding of what the general crime situation has been during this, the, the, this holiday. Um, so it's been generally okay. We have recorded a number of crimes, but they are still isolated crimes. You know, some people, it is their mainstay to actually commit crime. Sad to say, and difficult to admit, but when you do crime studies, you realize that for some people, what they live on, what they enjoy doing, is to commit crime. That's why your police must always also be alert and ahead of them. So there have been a few incidents here and there, and we count the incident that happened at Kaswa as part of the crimes that happened during the period. But um, so far, we are on the ground. Like I said, when we have public police cooperation, it helps such that even suspicious characters are, uh, we are notified of suspicious characters and suspicious movements even before crime occurs so that we can prevent as much and as we can. And have citizens been cooperative? Yes, citizens have been cooperative. Um, if you get to know the number of calls that were received at the various police command centers over the period, you would, you would wonder. So people have been very responsive Any and estimation? responsible. Um, you know, I said I don't like to put numbers out yes. until I am given specific well. figure that can be cross-checked. Very well. So people have themselves called to report crimes to the and police. Suspicions, and suspicions. Exactly. Okay, and these are, not, um, these are isolated and not uh, linked in, in, in certain ways to COVID or Easter. Uh, for Easter, it is the gatherings that we receive responses to uh, like calls uh, on, for instance, there is a, a bar close to me that is hosting people as though there is a party going on, those things. But general crime situations, people have also been reporting. And we are on the road. We are in the communities. We are- around. Is that happening a lot? Are more people calling to um, report people who are congregating and in breach of what the COVID protocols are we having a lot of that not this period because thankfully a lot of people have complied like I said but people do call even in your community park where people go to play football as a way of exercise people do call people feel threatened and so once neighbors feel threatened then they call police we step in and then we come and disperse that. Often when they see the police coming, they themselves they will even disperse before you get there. And how do you treat all of these calls? Are there some of, of them which you would consider as what probably nuisance calls? Yeah, we do. We do have a lot of um, calls like that. And maybe I should use this opportunity to warn the public again because um, prank calls, when we receive like three prank calls from the same number, we blacklist you which means that when you are in an emergency situation, you may not be able to reach the police. So no prank calls um, should be sent or should be dialed the way of the police. You know, we have toll free numbers. We also have mobile numbers to reach, but we don't encourage prank calls. Before you reach your police, it must be a truly an emergency case. Okay, maybe if you have the numbers here, you can share it uh, with our audience. I'd like us to take a break. But before we go on that break, um, Madam Sheila will share with us some of the numbers, the emergency numbers. If you, if you feel threatened by a group of people who have, you know, clustered, who have come together uh, in breach of, and are not wearing their nose mask, they are not observing social distance, distance, and then you feel threatened, there are numbers to call. Also on the matter of general crime, if you see anything suspicious, if you see a crime happening, you can get in touch with the police and report. So Sheila, over okay. to you. So generally, when you have any crime information to give to the police, our advice is that you walk to the nearest police station and you give that information. But then we also have emergency numbers where you can reach the police on. So the word is an emergency crime situation. So where there is an emergency crime situation, 
you can reach the police first toll free and then I will also give you some phone numbers. You may want to take your phone and save them now. So okay. the police emergency numbers, we have one eight five five five, one eight and triple five, mm -hmm. and then we have one nine one, and then there is a national number two. It is one one two, the same number you used to call the ambulance one one two. Okay. So these are toll free numbers that you can reach us on on any mobile phone, and then we also have two mobile lines. We call them road policing numbers because as the incident is happening on the road, we would want you to reach us for us to know how we are doing on the road. These are 055 3323 So let me repeat it, 055 3323 And then the other number is 27 156 Okay. But the Ghana Police Service is also on social media. Yes. Even on our website, you can have a live chat with the IGP, which happens like 24-7. The IGP, so, personally? Yes, it is the IGP you are chatting with. Oh, okay. So, um, apart from reaching us on our website, you can look for our verified pages on Facebook and on Twitter, too. It's okay. simply Ghana Police Service. Okay. So, but they are verified, so be aware that... that look for the verified tick so you know you were dealing with the Ghana police service. Okay, time now for a break. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion with Sheila Bachman, Superintendent Sheila Bachman of the Ghana Police Service. Welcome back. We're having a conversation with Superintendent Sheila Abaye Bachman, Director of the Public Affairs uh, Department of the Ghana Police Service. We're talking about security and uh, enforcing COVID protocols during this season of Easter. And um, you've given us the assurance, Sheila, that it hasn't ended. And also that it's possible um, in the holidays to come, we'll be seeing this no, happening um so at what tell us today when at what time today does the the, the covid plan that the police announced come to an end we know that that doesn't mean all policing will come to an end but um for the, spe the special season okay so um we do know that easter is ending tonight but that does not necessarily mean that police will stand down on our Easter security. It is the instruction the IGP will give that will tell whether we are standing down on Easter security. But security cannot be halted. It is a 24-hour, seven days a week affair, and so it will continue. So let's see how it goes throughout the day. Okay, we'll wait on the IGP on that. Now, in, tell us which areas and areas as well as regions have been uh, most difficult in managing with regard to the festivities and then the COVID protocols, getting people to comply or adhere, adhere to the protocols? So we, we consider the entire country. Um, national plan is based on reports that come from the districts and from the stations because we are everywhere in the country. We do not necessarily want to see an, one place as being more difficult than the other. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when it comes to restriction on gathering, you're looking at places where the population is higher. Yeah. So Accra region, and you know for us in the police service, Greater Accra region is two, uh, divided into two police commands, regional <laughs> commands. So Tema is a region on its own, and then Accra region is a region on its own. This is dictated by several other factors, including the population size. So within Accra, because you have a lot of people, and that is why the traffic congestion we saw on Thursday, for instance, was within Accra. Like when you, you mon we monitored the entire country and realized that it was within Accra. And even in Accra, it was some parts of Accra. Because if you went beyond, um, beyond Oyibi to Dodoa, for instance, which is part of the Accra Regional Command, you wouldn't experience that congestion. So the places where we have had these challenges will be places where there are a lot of people. Thankfully this year, Kweu was a bit easier to manage because 
like I said, the communal engagement. If people understand that everything we are doing is for their benefits and they come on board with you, it makes things easier. So, um, yes, it's been difficult with the night gatherings for a few people, but generally compliance has been good. You, you talk about communal engagement. Tell us what exactly you mean by that. Okay, so different groupings are identified within society uh, for different topics to be discussed with police. So for instance, if we're talking about transport, you are looking at not only operators, mm -hmm. but the leadership of the transport associations, and then owners of large fleets of transport and then you're looking at passengers. If you're talking about market centers, you're looking at the leadership of the various markets that you identify within the community. If you're talking about the youth, you are looking at the youth leaders. Mm -hmm. You're also looking at opinion leaders such as the chiefs, the queen mothers. You are looking at the district assemblies. You're looking at church leadership. You're looking at women leadership. You're looking at men leadership. So all manner of groupings, in addition to the general populace that we often use the mass media to reach. So all manner of these groupings are identified within each community in the country. And police officers within the community engage them. If it is about not going to the beach, you don't only need the revelers, but you need the fishermen and the heads of the fisher folk to also help with letting people know that they don't have to go to the beach. So all these people are identified throughout the country and every police officer who has a duty also takes the step to engage the people identified to ensure that community, uh, policing is total and communal based. How cooperative were they then given that there was a bit of non-compliance, especially in the night. Like I said, when you understand the rationale for an action, it makes it easy for you to come on board, although you may not accept it. So because this is a health issue, and our health experts have made us understand why these measures must be taken, mm -hmm. and with the force of law, we have been empowered to enforce we needed to approach it in that manner. And it's a multi-sectoral action. It is not only the police in action. So yes, the police, we are in uniform, and if it comes to arrest, we will arrest. But it's a multi-sectoral action, and we have approached it that way. We, we will continue to work that way, hoping that as the days go by, we will have less and less crime to report in the country, and for criminals to, to not feel comfortable and to flee. Let me bring up a matter that may be a bit uncomfortable uh, for the police. So on a day like this, I was driving um, a few hours ago around and I noticed there were uh, quite a number of police officers around, which gave a good indication, makes you feel safe. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you're going to be stopped and you find that certain, some police officers will be asking money from you what do you do about such circumstances? They may not be rampant, but they do happen. Yes, yeah, so if it is about a police misconduct you want to report, um, the two numbers I gave, you can also report to it. But take steps. Take steps and report to the nearest police station. Every police officer has a boss. Every police officer has a commander in charge or a senior person in charge. So try to locate the senior person and make the reports. In addition to that, we have an office within the police setup, the PIPs, the professional intelligence, exactly. You can lodge a complaint, we will follow through because we have to follow a, a procedure. You cannot just say because somebody has lodged a report or a complaint against a police officer for a misconduct, you are punishing the police officer. Everybody must be given a hearing. Unless you're coming under a whistleblower action, which is allowed by our laws, mm -hmm. in which case it takes a different course. The police officer is also given opportunity. And then if it, whatever punishment is required, we give it. What we have observed is that some people, when they go wrong and the police attempts to arrest them, instead of them submitting so that we will take them to court, 
they also try to bribe the police officers. And unfortunately, we may have police officers who will just accept the money, and then it becomes as though it's an extortion. But both people are wrong. Yeah. And so when we are in the wrong and we are arrested by the police, we should insist on being taken to court so that we can be punished and then it will serve as deterrent for What all. about a spot? Maybe the person offering the, the offeror of the bribe wants a spot fine so that they don't have to go through the inconvenience <laughs> well, and I, long process of court. At the moment, we have not been given the authority to punish. And so spot fine is not, um, is, is not, is not enforced in Ghana. So a police officer cannot fine you on the spot for doing A or B. But talking about snap checkpoints that police officers are, it is for the safety of the people. Sometimes we may be acting on intelligence. At other times, we may not necessarily be acting on intelligence. But there are things we are looking out for. For the majority of the such people, as. such as, for instance, so I will not be able to share everything with you. That's fine. But the trained eye can tell so two vehicles will move. The trained eye can tell who looks suspicious in one vehicle to be searched thoroughly for things that would help as evidence in leading into further investigation and even prosecution compared to a lay person. So we continue to urge the public to cooperate when we have snap checkpoints whether they are in the communities, whether in, they are on the highways or wherever they are, and whether they are, we're conducting the snap check in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the night. Sheila, what does a suspicious person look like? <laughs> that is, is for a trained eye to say. You can't give us any, anything that could help. No, we will not do profiling and labeling. <laughs> <laughs> we will not do profiling and labeling on this show because People can just jump at it. But a trained eye and a trained mind knows what he's looking out for. Okay. And um, you, you did indicate that it's not over. The, the enforcement plan is not over up till midnight. But even thereafter, depending on what the IGP says, um, as, we, as we draw the curtains, I'll leave you, I'll give you a few minutes just to share some information, relevant information from the police with, with our audience. Okay, so thank you. Um, we want to thank the media and the general public for the compliance so far during this, this Easter festivity, particularly with the general crime situation and for listening to us and driving without drinking or taking any intoxicated items. I, I mean, you have helped us to reduce the carnage on the roads over the period. It's not over, gatherings. We know that it is still um, early. People might feel tempted to go out and gather, but COVID will be rearing its head. So we want you to continue to support the police, not only during this Easter period, but beyond, so that we will be safe in this country. Your police is, we are, we are out there to work for you. We need your support to give us the necessary information to help arrest criminals to help prevent crime from happening. So continue to support us. And let us send the message to our families and friends, our networks. They should continue to stay away from trouble. If you are a parent, you should be very, very, very responsible and pay attention to your kids and who you leave them with and where they are at every point in time. For young ladies, we continue to put out tips daily on social media because we know young people are on social media. Tips that will help you, that will prevent you from being kidnapped. Tips that will prevent you from being cyber bullied or um, being fallen prey to fraud online. And th tips that help you to stay safe in the communities. Okay. Continue to follow the Ghana Police Service and give us the maximum support we need to make Ghana safe. Okay, and Sheila gave the numbers. You can find the numbers on the Ghana Police Service uh, platform on social media. You can also go to their website. Um, unfortunately, we cannot bring social media comments. Uh, we're having some difficulty, but uh, we apologize for that. Next time, still send uh, those messages.
Um, we're grateful to you, Sheila, Superintendent Sheila Abaye Bachman, Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service, uh, for joining us on Good Afternoon Ghana. It was a pleasure being here. Okay, and I'm Francisca Kakra Fawson. Thank you so much for your company.